Today, we'll talk about one of the most fearsome trios that controlled the music industry and beyond, consisting of Jay-Z, Diddy, and Beyonce. Is Trump somehow involved in Diddy's crimes? How are all these people connected, and will anyone face punishment? We'll discuss the details that other bloggers are silent about and afraid to mention. This isn't clickbait or deception. I've gathered exclusive information from various sources for you. And trust me, it's worth listening to carefully. You're on the Detective Brooks channel, my name is John, let's get started. In the early 1990s, when hip-hop's popularity was rapidly growing, Diddy saw new opportunities for himself. From a regular intern at a label, he grew to become a talent scout manager. He possessed the art of persuasion and eloquence. In 1993 his own label, Bad Boy Records, was founded, and Clive Davis, the man who discovered Whitney Houston and many other artists, helped him with this. It's hard to say now exactly how they became friends. Diddy's main star on the label was rapper The Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls. In the first half of the 90s, Diddy wasn't yet a very influential figure. Diddy was coming up in times when there were practically no truly influential black people in the music industry. How did he manage to achieve the status that later instilled fear in many? Until 1995, the industry was experiencing obvious stagnation. Later, Diddy began to be literally accused of making hip-hop such a mercantile genre. Songs about brands, parties, money, the introduction of choruses and vocal parts into hip-hop, all this was done to bring his production into the mainstream. Diddy used all possible methods to break through to the top. He knew how to negotiate smoothly, flatter the right people, and boast about the successes of his projects. Even the word no couldn't stop him. Jennifer Lopez said that she agreed to date Diddy not because of his stubbornness, but because of his persistence. If persuasion and bribery didn't work, more serious means were employed. New York radio stations simply had no right to breathe if Diddy didn't want them to. If Tupac had said something about Diddy in an interview, and if Angie Martinez had told Diddy about it and he, in turn, had forbidden them to play certain tracks on air, they wouldn't have played them. There are still rumors about the unsolved murders of Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. Maybe we'll return to these theories later? Write in the comments if you're interested in learning about this. To be honest, as long as I can remember, people always joked that Diddy was a dangerous mafia in show business. But every joke was only partly a joke. He wasn't appearing in the media as often. He was fully immersed in his business projects and seemed to have stepped back a bit from music. Although at the time when he was actively involved in show business, he had awesome hits that the whole world knew. For example, the duet with Faith Evans' I'll Be Missing You from 1997. On November 16, 2023, R&B singer Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against Diddy. She accused him of sexual violence, abusive relationships, and forced prostitution. He completely controlled her life, where she lived, what she drove, what she wore, who she talked to, even doctor visits, everything was under his control. When they briefly broke up in 2011, Diddy threatened rapper Kid Cudi, who briefly dated Cassie. Rumor has it he even blew up his car as a warning. And what happened next after such serious accusations? Nothing. The very next day, Cassie withdrew her lawsuit and both parties stated that the issue was resolved. Wendy Williams tried to tell us about this for a long time. At that time, it seemed that everything had quieted down, but from December 2023 to March 2024, a whole series of new accusations against Diddy emerged, similar to those made by Cassie Ventura. Interestingly, many of the new plaintiffs claimed that they had sought help back in the years when the violence was allegedly committed against them. However, these cases were quickly closed at the time, despite the presence of evidence. The situation changed dramatically after producer Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod, filed a lawsuit in February 2024. Lil Rod was one of the producers of Diddy's latest album titled, The Love Album of the Grid. You might remember Diddy's performance at the VMA ceremony in 2023, which took place two days before the release of this album. At that time, he only briefly announced the release of the new record, accepted an award, and left the stage. So, in his lawsuit, Lil Rod claimed that during the 14 months of working on the album, his relationship with Diddy was, to put it mildly, intimate. 
Lil Rod entered Diddy's inner circle and became a witness to many details of his life. According to Lil Rod, he repeatedly experienced sexual violence, was drugged, and forced to engage in sexual relations with people at Diddy's direction. Of course, there was a contract signed between them, but Diddy resorted to threats to keep Lil Rod under control. The producer also said that for his work on the album, he received only a small portion of the promised fee, and his name in the list of authors was significantly reduced. Lil Rod stated that Diddy records everything that happens at his closed parties and mansions on video. It was these compromising recordings that he used for a long time to silence both Lil Rod himself and many other celebrities. In addition, the lawsuits contained information about Diddy's involvement in sex trafficking, selling people for sexual exploitation. It was after this that the investigation began to gain momentum. On March 25, 2024, searches were conducted in Diddy's mansions. Around the same time, the rapper was allegedly questioned and released to rest in the Caribbean. Who exactly questioned him and who gave permission for him to leave is unknown. Initially, it was planned that Diddy would visit the island nation of Antigua and Barbuda, but his arrival there could not be confirmed. Where he could actually be is a mystery. On May 17, 2024, an eight-year-old video recording from a hotel room was leaked online, showing Diddy looking for Cassie, who was trying to escape from him while he was taking a shower. Where did this recording come from? Why did someone keep it for eight years? Perhaps it was found during the searches in Diddy's house. Diddy himself, it seems, had not yet realized at that moment how serious this case would become. After all, he had always managed to either hush up the scandal or get rid of the dissatisfied before. For example, in 2018, Diddy's former wife, Kim Porter, was planning to release a memoir in which she intended to reveal details of their relationship from 1994 to 2007. But by the end of the same year, when the book was supposed to be published, Kim suddenly died from a severe form of pneumonia that developed from what seemed to be a common flu. A strange coincidence, isn't it? On September 16, 2024, Diddy was arrested in New York. He was denied the right to bail, even though he offered a whopping $50 million. But this raises several questions. What happened in the period from March to September that significantly influenced the course of the investigation and led to the arrest? Why wasn't Diddy detained and declared wanted immediately after the searches in March? Even after the leak of the video with Cassie? And why, knowing about the seriousness of the accusations, did Diddy dare to return to the United States from the Caribbean islands, where he was hiding? Did someone assure him that there was no danger, and he calmly flew back? Despite the high profile of this case, most details of the investigation are still hidden from the public. We don't even know when the trial will take place. Currently, Diddy is officially accused of human trafficking for sexual exploitation, sexual violence against women and men, including minors, extortion, threats, possession of weapons and prohibited substances. To date, at least 120 lawsuits against Diddy with similar accusations are known. These lawsuits were selected as the most convincing out of 3,000 submitted claims. Interestingly, rapper Art Kelly, a longtime friend of Diddy with whom he often spent time, was previously arrested and convicted on similar charges. In early April 2024, when Art Kelly was asked in prison about his opinion on the searches in Diddy's mansions, he called all the accusations complete nonsense and stated that someone had started a celebrity hunt. But what if, in addition to these public statements, Art Kelly said something else behind closed doors? something that made law enforcement take on Diddy's case with double force. Overall, it seems that the investigation into Diddy's activities has been ongoing for a long time and is thorough. It's quite possible that Cassie Ventura's high-profile lawsuit didn't appear out of nowhere. How much courage would a former R&B singer, whose career has long been in decline, have to stand alone against such an influential and dangerous person as Diddy? Perhaps someone intentionally encouraged her to take this step to signal other victims, don't be silent, don't be afraid to tell the truth. Officially, public attention is focused on the figure of Diddy himself, but on the internet, the hate is primarily directed at the couple Jay-Z and Beyonce. While Jay-Z's involvement, who often hung out with Diddy, seems quite plausible, the accusations against Beyonce still seem far-fetched. The poor singer now can't even calmly advertise a new collection of jeans on her Instagram. 
However, let's figure everything out gradually. And let's not forget to mention the track She Knows, performed by J. Cole. This song supposedly hints that things are not so simple and straightforward with Beyonce. So, the story continues. We'll cover everything in order done. One of the key details in Diddy's case is his infamous white parties, which he hosted from 1998 to 2009. These events, intended for society's elite, had a strict dress code, all guests had to be dressed in white. Diddy believed that this would put all attendees on the same level, although in reality, the equality there was only superficial. The main purpose of these parties was to promote Diddy's image. Numerous business deals related to his legal business were made there. Of course, many stars came there just to relax and even brought their children. In show business, there are constantly some closed gatherings that everyone dreams of attending, as it's a great opportunity for networking. Celebrities themselves, due to tight schedules, rarely cross paths with each other, so they often just want to relax in the circle of their own. But the hottest part of Diddy's white parties began at night, when only the closest friends and confidants remained. It was there, according to media reports, that real horrors took place, sexual orgies, forced sexual acts, the realization of wealthy people's perverted fantasies. At the same time, issues related to the illegal part of Diddy's business empire were resolved. An interesting fact, literally on the opposite shore from Diddy's private mansions is a port with containers. Very convenient for a person accused of human trafficking, including minors. It would seem, why pry into someone else's bedroom? Let them do what they want behind closed doors without cameras. But the thing is, there were cameras there. To prevent anyone from saying too much, continuous video surveillance was conducted in all locations of Diddy's white parties, in every room. Over the years spent in show business, Diddy accumulated compromising material on practically all of Hollywood. After all, if a recording surfaces showing a celebrity present at a supposedly safe event, how can they prove they didn't know about the criminal activities happening behind the wall? There's your blackmail material. That's why today hundreds of stars are under suspicion of possible involvement in Diddy's crimes. Jay-Z, Beyonce, Billie Eilish, Mariah Carey, Jennifer Lopez, Chris Brown, Ashton Kutcher, Leonardo DiCaprio, the Kardashian sisters, Donald Trump with his wife, Oprah Winfrey, and even Barack Obama, and this is far from a complete list. By the way, it's not even that easy now to find photos of some of them from those infamous parties. However, not everyone has a strong enough psyche to constantly live in fear and keep horrific secrets. The subconscious itself tries to protect and share information, either through hints or direct text. Recently, a fragment of a 2016 interview with Usher spread on the internet, where he answers the host's question about the times when, as a 13-year-old teenager, he lived under Diddy's guardianship for a whole year. Usher called those times wild and admitted that he would never put his child in such conditions. Interestingly, it was then, in the early 90s, when Diddy was just starting his music business, that the underage Usher ended up under his wing, the place where he learned the wisdom of pop star life, the singer characterized as the devil's house. One can only guess what other side of show business was revealed to young Usher, besides lessons in vocals, choreography, and producing. They also remembered an old video from Justin Bieber's channel, where Diddy states that although he's not the singer's official guardian, he's going to really party with him for the next 48 hours. It's still unclear what exactly was meant by this fun, but viewers notice signs of anxiety and even fear in Bieber's behavior. In general, Justin had to grow up very early. Later, he was seen many times in Diddy's company, and the level of partying noticeably increased with the singer's age. Bieber's mental problems, his alcohol and drug addictions in the early 2010s, are now being linked to Diddy's influence. In 2014, Justin was even detained by the police for drunk driving. Now the singer is undergoing rehabilitation, giving up harmful habits, married Hailey Bieber, and they recently had a child. But mental problems still make themselves known. The internet is actively discussing Bieber's latest musical works looking for hints about what was really happening behind the scenes of show business. Take, for example, the recent video for the seemingly innocent song Yummy, which we initially just hated. Today, in light of new details, everything falls into place. In the video, 
Bieber metaphorically retells the story of his growing up in the music industry. He compares his young version to a dessert that was fed to adult and wealthy people. Whether this is only about music and image, or if the singer is hinting at something more intimate, it's hard to say. In the song Lonely from the album Justice, Justin shares the feeling of loneliness and how over the years in show business, he has almost no close people left because everyone constantly needs something from him. One way or another, it's a real cry for help. By the way, it was Usher, along with Scooter Braun, who introduced Justin Bieber to the world. And if Usher remembered his terrible years under Diddy's guardianship, why didn't he warn young Justin against something similar, protect him from meetings with this person? A very important question. After all, positioning himself as a victim, Usher in fact became an accomplice. Perhaps such a close acquaintance between Bieber and Diddy could have been avoided altogether. As is known, Justin Timberlake also fought for a contract with the young singer, even planning to open his own label for this purpose, but lost to Usher. What would have happened if things had turned out differently? A question without an answer. A similar situation developed with The Weeknd. Although Justin Timberlake took him as an opening act during the 20 20 Experience tour, ultimately, the friendship with Diddy turned out to be closer and more significant for The Weeknd. But more on that later. Such a double letdown for Timberlake makes us look at his recent video, No Angels, released in March 2024, in a new light. The plot follows the main character at some elite party, where he gradually notices an ominous figure observing all those present from the side. As time passes, the atmosphere at the event becomes increasingly eerie, and the guests reveal their true demonic nature. It's worth mentioning an incident that occurred in 1999 and significantly affected the relationship between Diddy and Jennifer Lopez. When the couple, along with a bodyguard, decided to visit a nightclub, they had a conflict with the establishment's owner. The situation escalated to the point where a weapon, allegedly stored in J.Lo's purse, was used. As a result, one of the club's visitors received a gunshot wound to the face. Diddy and Lopez tried to escape but later turned themselves in to the police. Despite eyewitness testimonies, neither the rapper nor the singer was found guilty. All responsibility was placed on Diddy's bodyguard. Although Jennifer was shocked by what happened, she lacked the courage to immediately end the relationship. The final straw was Diddy's infidelity. Lopez describes the period of their romance as one of the most painful and nervous in her life, filled with unpleasant emotions and experiences. Later, Jennifer publicly referred to Diddy as a good person who taught her a lot. Perhaps this was just her way of trying to avoid unnecessary problems. Interestingly, the singer raised the topic of violence this year in a musical film made to support the album This Is Me Now. Most viewers were skeptical about this work and, it seems, didn't pay much attention to the plot. Particularly revealing is the scene for the song Rebound, where in a transparent glass house, a clear allusion to life under the scrutiny of cameras, where nothing can be hidden, Lopez's character suffers from abuse by her partner, played by a black actor. In another episode of the film, Jennifer brings home a stranger who is found to have a gun when meeting her friends. By the way, an interesting coincidence, both Lopez's project and Timberlake's musical release saw the light of day in early 2024. And both failed miserably, with the artists themselves subjected to scathing criticism. While Justin can refer to the scandal with Britney Spears, when every word in his new songs was dissected, the reasons for the sudden wave of hate towards Lopez after a quarter century of successful career remain a mystery. She was suddenly expected to deliver some incredible vocals, although previously everyone was quite satisfied with her usual level of performance. Expose stories about the singer have been circulating on the internet for years, but for some reason, it's just now. Who, if not the hosts of popular talk shows, can know all the ins and outs of those very white parties of Diddy? Jimmy Kimmel is a public favorite, the host of his own show. He's less restrained in his statements than many of his colleagues, often allowing himself bold jokes and comments. Diddy has been his guest many times. And during a recent interview, something interesting happened. Remember the couple Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith? They constantly cheat on each other while shedding crocodile tears in public. So, Jada released a memoir, 
And Kimmel suddenly decided to ask Diddy about the authenticity of some facts from this book. It seems that for a moment, Diddy forgot he was live on air. He absolutely didn't expect such a direct question and literally froze in anger. For a second, the rapper transformed into a completely different person, but quickly composed himself and with feigned surprise asked Kimmel, and I thought we were friends. You see, they're all in the same boat, and Diddy knows that Kimmel is well aware of what's really happening behind the scenes. That's why this question caught him off guard. By unwritten rules, Jimmy should have kept quiet. Then both tried to smooth over the awkward moment. Let's assume that Kimmel really isn't aware of all the details. He's quite a homebody and leads a relatively quiet life. But there's one nuance. Recently, Jimmy deleted all interviews with Diddy from his channel. Just a short while ago, I could watch the full recording of that conversation, but now I barely found the needed fragment. And the leading late-night shows for some reason don't discuss this high-profile case at all, although they always have a separate news block. About Trump's election campaign, as much as you want, but about the scandal with Diddy, not a word. Think for yourself. And let's remember our favorite Ellen DeGeneres. She also joked about those infamous Diddy parties. Everyone laughed, but hardly realized the full horror of what was really happening there. In 2010, Ellen invited the rapper to her show and asked about these events. He replied that he keeps inviting her, but she doesn't come. However, for Ellen, this is a common thing, she's probably invited everywhere, as a well-known media personality and one of the most popular TV hosts. But due to her age and lifestyle, she rarely attends such gatherings, and she's not obligated to appear there. Ellen goes to bed early and lives in a different city. When she heard that Diddy's parties usually start early, she was surprised. She thought his events start late in the evening. In response, Diddy said something. At that time, the audience didn't pay much attention to it, but now, armed with new knowledge, we hear a completely different subtext in his words. Ellen, to lighten the mood, innocently joked about these parties and changed the subject. Among the mass media representatives who tried to warn the public about Diddy's dark affairs, the controversial TV host Wendy Williams stands out particularly. A difficult documentary about her struggle with progressive aphasia and dementia was recently released, but we heard about what she was trying to warn us much earlier. We just didn't pay attention. Wendy has always been known for her directness and fearlessness. Few remember that before her television career, she was the queen of radio, a central figure in the hip-hop scene who vividly discussed all gossip and rumors. However, attempts to open the public's eyes to the dark sides of Diddy's life usually ended badly for her. In 1993, Diddy founded Bad Boy Records, and from 1994, Wendy was working on radio in New York. When she tried to hint at Diddy's possible homosexuality on air in 1998, she was immediately fired. In 2017, the rapper himself visited Wendy Williams' show. He was tense, which was noticeable from his posture and the look with which he drilled the host. At that moment, Wendy was already a television superstar and had considerable influence. For a moment, it seemed that Diddy was not against settling relations, but then he suddenly mentioned her son. It sounded like a veiled threat, stick to the script and don't blurt out anything extra on air. Knowing the rumors about Diddy's connections with minors, these words sent chills down one's spine. After the recent wave of accusations, Wendy made a statement that it was long past time for Diddy to face court. The video with Cassie Ventura is truly horrifying. One involuntarily wonders how many more such victims there really are. Few mention The weekend's role in this story, although Diddy actually became his mentor at the beginning of his career. Yes, it's this word that now causes fear. Although The weekend didn't catch the white parties, he had to attend many of Diddy's later events. In 2016, when heading to one of these parties with Bella Hadid, The weekend took security with him, although previously he felt quite at ease in Diddy's company. The themes of drugs, alcohol, and secret parties run like a red thread through all of the Canadian singer's work. In his early works, he didn't know how to veil them so skillfully, remember at least the tracks, Initiation and Life of the Party. In the first of these songs, dated back to 2011, that is, the very beginning of The weekend's career, it's about a girl who was forced to use illegal substances and have sex. In light of today's events, the lyrics take on a chilling sound. Again a story about a girl who has to please someone, 
and again a mention of drugs. The weekend's failed series, The Idol, is now perceived in a new way. According to the musician, the project is based on his own experience and is intended to be a warning to others. It's a story about an abusive man who created an entire sex cult, promising fame to his victims. He forced them into intimate acts, dressed them strangely, and involved famous celebrities in his games. It's difficult and unpleasant to watch, especially with the realization that something similar could well have happened in real life. The conflict between 50 Cent and Peen Diddy dates back to 2006, when the former released a diss tract The Bomb, accusing the latter of involvement in the notorious B.I.G.'s murder in 1997. Their relationship was further strained by the fact that both rappers were promoting competing alcohol brands. 50 Cent was never interested in Diddy's parties, he was more concerned with the creative side of the music industry. However, he learned juicy details from acquaintances who attended those events. Now, as the truth is gradually coming out, there are rumors that 50 Cent intends to make a documentary about it. For now, these are just rumors, but we'll see what happens. In 2018, on the Drink Champs podcast, 50 Cent mentioned Diddy's strange behavior towards him long before their beef started. According to the rapper, Diddy offered to take him shopping, which was not at all typical for hip-hop artists of that time and reeked of some stereotypes. This vague offer made 50 Cent doubt his colleague's orientation. In general, 50 Cent had long warned that it's better not to get involved with Diddy and that he's a rather strange guy. He wasn't afraid of physical retaliation, after all, he himself had been shot nine times. But it seems they did put pressure on his career, and soon 50 Cent stepped into the shadows. And where would we be without our Slim Shady? Eminem doesn't give public comments very willingly, but in his rap verses, he gladly roasts the hottest topics. Today, everyone is particularly interested in his lines from the tracked Kill Shot. You'll hit when Diddy admits that he killed Tupac. This was about Eminem's beef with another rapper, Machine Gun Kelly, who was mentored by Diddy at the time. To avoid confrontation with the influential producer, Eminem added in the outro of the song, I'm sorry, you know I love you. Diddy turned out to be the only person to whom the god of the rap Olympus apologized publicly and officially, because usually, he doesn't do this in principle. By doing so, Eminem drew even more attention to his lines about Tupac. By the way, in 2024, he didn't apologize anymore. In the track, Fuel, Eminem again raised the topic of Diddy's possible involvement in the deaths of Tupac and Notorious B.I.G. In general, Diddy's white parties have repeatedly become the object of pop culture attention. Besides musical prophecies, one of the brightest examples is a 2019 episode of The Simpsons titled The Great Fat Spy. By the way, Diddy himself loved to compare himself to The Great Gatsby. So, in that episode, a character very similar to the rapper throws an exclusive party for a white audience. Now let's unravel the web of internet rumors surrounding Beyonce and Jay-Z, who have been accused of almost all mortal sins. Jay-Z's friendship with Diddy began back in the 90s. Despite problems with the law, they were very close at the end of the decade. They have a lot in common in business too. Both moved away from active musical activities and invested in the alcohol industry. Jay-Z's most profitable project is Armand de Brignac Champagne, while Diddy owns vodka and brandy brands like Ciroc. Jay-Z aspired to become the number one rapper at any cost. But he wanted not only status but also to expand his influence beyond the music industry. And for this, he needed a powerful brand, for example, in the form of an influential star couple. He himself as the pinnacle of hip-hop and next to him the queen of R&B. Initially, Jay-Z considered the singer Aaliyah for this role. A pretty young girl whose career was rapidly going up with each new album. She was highly valued in music circles, and she had a considerable fan base. But 18-year-old Aaliyah wasn't very eager to make friends with an almost 30-year-old rapper, especially after the scandalous illegal marriage with Art Kelly in 1994 when she was only 15. Then Jay-Z switched to another promising artist, Beyoncé, who was making noise with her group Destiny's Child at that time. She turned out to be more compliant, plus a solo career promised much more opportunities. Given how long Beyoncé and Jay-Z's relationship has lasted, many are convinced. If the husband was involved in Diddy's dark affairs, then the wife probably knows much more than it seems. 
There's even a theory that in order to promote Beyonce to the top of the charts, Jay-Z, with Diddy's support, removed her potential competitors from the path. The mysterious death of singer Aaliyah in August 2001 still remains the subject of numerous speculations and conspiracy theories. The young star, who was actively promoting her music at the time, was supposed to shoot a video for the song Rock the Boat in Miami. However, a decision was unexpectedly made to move part of the filming to the Bahamas. After completing the shoot in the Bahamas, Aaliyah's team found themselves in a time crunch. The only available option for returning to the US turned out to be a small plane that barely fit all the filming equipment. The singer, upon seeing this, refused to fly, calling such a choice dangerous and unwise. However, her team, thinking that Aaliyah was just overtired and stressed, gave her a sedative, which made her fall asleep. The unconscious singer was carried onto the plane, which crashed immediately after takeoff. Aaliyah died on the spot. Later it was revealed that the cause of the crash was not only the plane's overload but also the insufficient qualification of the pilot, who was also under the influence of alcohol or drugs. This tragedy gave rise to many questions. Why was it necessary to move the filming at the last moment? Why didn't anyone care about basic safety rules? Perhaps different standards apply for private flights? Besides Aaliyah's death, the sinister trio, producer Sean Puffy Combs, known as Diddy, Music mogul Clive Davis and producer L.A. Reid are attributed to involvement in several other deaths. For instance, former TLC member Lisa Lopez died in a car accident in Honduras shortly after refusing to continue her contract with Arista Records, run by Davis and Reid, close friends of Combs. Interestingly, Honduras was where the factories producing clothing for Sean Combs' Sean John brand were located. Another high-profile death was Michael Jackson, who in 2001 publicly criticized Sony Music and its chairman Tommy Motola during work on the Invincible album. Soon after, Jackson faced renewed accusations of child molestation. The singer spent considerable money on lawyers, was forced to sell a significant part of his property, which undermined his mental and physical health. Notably, rumors about someone's improper behavior in the music industry were already circulating at that time. And Michael, who had already been involved in a similar scandal in the 90s, became a convenient target for Motola, who probably wanted to teach the singer a lesson and was acquainted with Combs, attending his parties. In June 2009, when Jackson decided to return to the stage, he died at the hands of an unqualified doctor. Although the direct connection between Aaliyah's death and the Beyoncé-Jay-Z couple is more clearly traced, the deaths of Lopez and Jackson seem more in line with Combs' sphere of interests. However, internet users' attention was drawn to the strange intertwining of Beyoncé's September 4, Combs' November 4, and Jay-Z's December 4 birthdays with the dates of death of Lopez' April 25, Jackson June 25, and Aaliyah August 25. Coincidence or pattern? To this tangle of mysterious deaths and conspiracies, another figure is added, Donald Trump, who has repeatedly publicly called Sean Combs his good friend. Working 20... for Diddy. Absolutely. I love Diddy. You know he's a good friend of mine. He's a good guy. Anonymous sources provide information that Trump attended both Combs, white parties, and his infamous freak parties. Although now, during the election campaign, this might be simple manipulation, the fact of the connection between Trump and Combs is unequivocally confirmed. Moreover, there is public information, which Donald Trump's wife Ivana currently refuses to comment on, that she also attended those parties and saw what was happening there. Why is everyone silent now? Perhaps because of the elections, as no one wants to risk their ratings. It is also known for certain that Combs had connections with the Democrats, particularly with Barack Obama, who also publicly spoke approvingly of him. Moreover, Combs openly supported Obama in the elections. And again, anonymous sources claim that Obama also attended Combs' parties. This entire tangled web of connections, conspiracies, and mysterious deaths leaves more questions than answers. Were the deaths of Aaliyah, Tupac, Biggie, and Jackson a coincidence, or are influential figures in the music industry behind this? What role do politicians like Trump and Obama play in this? And will we ever learn the truth hidden behind the silence and excuses of those involved? As long as these questions remain unanswered,
Conspiracy theories and speculations surrounding the sinister trio and their high-ranking friends will not subside. What do you think about this? Write in the comments. I'm ready for discussions in the comments.